to read this information. Remember, you're only going to read your number, okay? No. And here it comes. I put the first five up, I count up to seven, and I get rid of the text. And they scream and shout in frustration, <laughs> the people in the, in the audience, which frankly is better than falling asleep reading it, isn't I it? I think so. I say, here comes the second seven, seven, eight, five, and the second five have more words in, so there's a scream of, of annoyance and howl of dismay from the audience, and they do those five. And say, look, are you, are you serious? You didn't have enough time. They say, yes. So would you want another seven seconds? They go, yes, please. They're desperate for this second seven seconds. So I actually went, and it's always the same. And I've done this with, like, I did it with 650 people in um, Curitiba, Brazil, divided into teams of five. So it was quite noisy to put it together. As soon as you show the second one for seven seconds, they think, I, I actually don't need another seven seconds. You can feel it in the atmosphere. Yeah. Right, but the point is, You've actually challenged them. You've actually made them do something about a little bit out of their comfort zone. You've got them out of their seats. You put them in teams. All this. And then when it's finished, you sit down, you open your book, and you see the text about the two presidents. And you've worked hard to sort of in that pre-reading activity. And I think things like that. The th funny thing is, my book, Drama Improvisation, should have had an extra chapter on exactly this kind of thing, bringing reading text to life in a dramatic way. But, the, but they decided the book was too long already. I'd written well, too many pictures, you know. I might read it for my presentation at Tito France because that is my topic. <laughs> I'll, I'll, send you, I'll, send you, I'll send you the chapter I didn't publish in the book. Oh, that's so that, right. The key, the key to this is, as a, and, and it's not a question of saying, well, here are the five, five ways to do this. You, you know your students. You know your students. You know what they're interested in. You know what they already know about. You know what time of day it is. It's, it's the middle of the afternoon. They're a bit tired. They need to do something different before the reading, the actual silent reading or sort of what you're reading or reading aloud in that way I don't like takes place. Before every major reading takes at any level with your students, whether they're advanced students or elementary, it doesn't matter. Make, do something that, that shakes them up a bit, makes them find things out from their friends, makes them write things down on paper and, and pass them around, anything to just try and bring the topic of this reading text to life before they actually read it. I think that's a very good message. I, I quite book. like the... And these are things that we do... Sorry. Um, well, the thing is, the thing we do automatically. There was a lag it. there and I interrupted you. <laughs> so I'm very sorry. I, right. just, I was just going to say, I think this, this is great. Uh, you, you said a phrase in there, which I think would be a great title for a talk and I wish I thought about it and Which changed one? my topic. The cries of dismay. <laughs> uh, and for me, well, uh, it's, it's what I've said a lot in talks that I've done about reading. You know, the more you get them desperate to read, the mm -hmm. more they want to read. I mean, that's, that's right, a great... Yeah. They're just a great, because they've not had a chance to read it. Yeah, and, and they kind of, you, you get them wanting to read so much. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it's exactly that kind of activity. So are you, are you saying that it's difficult to build that kind of activity in course book material, but the trained teacher should know, should find I think it out? Is, when, when I write my own teacher's guides, I'll put that kind of thing in as a yeah, guest. That's and lovely. It, I'll put it in unit one, and then when I get to unit four, where there's a similar kind of reading, I say, I say look back at the, the suggestion for activity four in unit one. But the problem is that most people don't read teacher's guides. And the fact of the matter is, unfortunately, I, when I did my book in a uh, book for Central Europe called Prospects, um, I went around uh, just demonstrating activities from the book as I had written them in the teacher's guide, and somebody said, oh, it makes more sense when you do it standing up than it does reading it in the teacher's guide. So there's this, basically there's a problem if you read the teacher's guide to, to be able to imagine exactly how it works in class. But the overall idea, is it, what I was going to say before we, we stopped something else, was when it comes to the, the skill of speaking, it seems to me that most training, most teacher training offers lots and lots of different interesting ideas about how to encourage speaking at all levels, right? We're gonna, well, we need a different kind of speaking task for this activity. There's lots and lots of ways to get your students to speak individually, in pairs, in groups, in a mingler. They're all there, you know, and, and teacher training is full of them. But somehow it seems to me that reading, when it comes to the reading skill, a lot of work goes into how 
to get students to think about reading for for, 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 for gist and skim reading and scan reading, all that kind of stuff. I agree. Those kind of skills, without it being, it being the physical awareness of the classroom and how that can help and how changing the focus, stopping the students just sitting there with their books, making them stand up and walk around, you know, scraps of information, jigsaw reading, anything like that. It really helps. It creates um, a curiosity Desire as well to read. engage yeah. the students. And I think really, I mean, and it, you see a lot of people, you go to somewhere like Hungary as an example, where they say, but my students aren't reading, they don't need all that. That's fine. Same in China. Chinese kids apparently read a lot. They don't need to have all these kind of gimmicks. That's great. But I have sat in so many classes in so many countries where the minute the reading text starts, not only do the quick, the, the bright students who sit at the front start reading it aloud, but the ones at the back go, and they just completely run out of steam. They don't like that part of the class. And I'm afraid it's pretty universal. And so anybody says, no, my students love reading. Mm, no, you love reading. Yes. And I'm not sure you're all your students do the same. And, and there's no reason why it should. Reading in a foreign language is difficult. Reading in a foreign language is difficult. And particularly, especially in China, where it's a different script. Any, any um, society where the script is different makes it doubly hard. You should always remember that. Well, that was great. That was a great uh, conversation I had with you. I know um, uh, it's been two weeks since those topics were discussed, but I felt they are topics that are always interesting to teachers, and we always come back to the questions of motivation and engagement. Um, Absolutely. And, words. and I think, uh, yeah, and again, reading aloud, we may think it belongs to the history cupboard, but it's so much, <laughs> so alive and kicking out there in mm -hmm. so many classrooms in the world that I think it's time well spent to tell teachers that mm. we can do better with this. Um, well, but even, even if, um, um, you know, my, my, when, when I talk to my kids about their primary school education, they love the best thing that both of my daughters loved. I mean, partly because it was a, it was the, the nature of the room was was very nice. In both, the, they were in the same school, but they had different rooms, which they remember. They had a reading corner, of course. This is a primary thing. You can't do this with adults. You can't do it with secondary. But the idea of we're going to we're going to listen to our lovely teacher read us a story. Okay, this is listening, not reading, but it's still it's from a book. Reading. And they go to this corner, they sit on the floor, and, and my older daughter particularly said she used to just look so much look forward to that day. Now, if we can try and make reading for teenagers or reading for adults into some kind of really positive experience, you know, that we know that the text is coming up, the teacher's going to come up with some clever idea to make it more interesting for us. And it may well be, if in your class you have one or two really good speakers of the language who enjoy reading aloud, ask them to read it, you know? Yeah. And then you can choose whether the students close their books and listen, which makes it turns it into a listening activity, obviously, um, or they read along, you know? And that's the way. If you have good readers who are standing facing the rest of the class, that would be nice. Yeah. If they enjoy it and the rest of the class enjoy the, the experience of listening to them. Some of the students might get a bit fed up with that kid becomes teacher's pet, you know, who because she can read better than the rest of us. There's a, there's a, you, you can never be sure how that kind of activity will be, um, be uh, received by the others. But I go back to my first point. If you're sitting in a class of rows of students where you're looking at the back of everybody else's head and somebody's mumbling the first line of a reading text about Mount Everest four rows in front of you, you will not be very, very motivated that day. You will not be engaged. And if you know this is going to happen every lesson to the future, you'll feel quite suicidal about going to English class, you know, whatever age you are. That's That's right. a bit of a finish up. So, to so avoid your students feeling suicidal, you know, do something <laughs> different. <laughs> That's great. Can